Di govardhan ki jai, vrindavadan ki jai, majuram ki jai, sami ki jai, yamunamai ki jai. Shimadi glasi devi ki jai, samaveda bhakta vrindi ki jai. Go, vrindamanda. All glories, the assembled devotees, all glories, the assembled devotees, all glories, the assembled devotees. All glories to Shri Guru and Gauranga, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So yesterday I forgot to mention several things, so I'm going to mention them this morning before we go into the Bhagavatam class. So we're going to Timananda Shagana Jana Salake Achak Shuru Meditam Vena Tazmai Shri Maha. So I forgot to mention that it was Gopashtami yesterday. And in addition, it was the uh, disappearance day or days of three great personalities, uh, Gadadhar Das, uh, Srinivas Acharya, and Dhananjaya Pandit. So as far as Gopastami is concerned, it's the day that Krishna grew up. <laughs> and uh, having been grown up, or growing up, Krishna got charge of the cows instead of the camps. And it's a very auspicious day, and it's a day that uh, cows are supposed to be worshipped. Uh, so if I would have known that, I would have gone to the farm and uh, worshipped some cows, but I forgot to do that. Anyway, and then there's a story about Radharani, who wanted to be with Krishna, so... Uh, it appears that Radharani and Subal look very similar, have similar types of features, so she dressed up as Subal, and she was able to uh, associate with Krishna when he was taking care of the cows. I mean, there's many stories that the Acharyas have written about uh, Radharani dressing up as Subal and Subal dressing up as Radharani to enable Radha and Krishna to meet with each other. However, uh, in some temples, they actually dress uh, the deity of Radharani as a coward boy. This is not bona fide. Uh, why am I saying that? Because you're not supposed to uh, enact the Lord's pastimes utilizing the deities. I mean, in some temples in the past, they even uh, made uh, it look like Radharani and Krishna were on a boat. And other temples, they even put, let's say, uh, inserts in the eyes of the deities so it looked like the deities were looking at each other. And other places they actually had uh, styrofoam hands made for the for Radharani. I don't know if you ever saw this. And they hid her actual hand so it looked like she was carrying a water pot on her head. So the deities are not meant to dealt, be dealt with like that because we're worshipping Radha Krishna in the mood of Lakshmi Narayana. It's actually Radha and Krishna uh, that we're worshipping. But the mood, I mean, internally, yes, we can have the mood of, you know, Raj, which is uh, Raghunuga Bhakti, you understand? But externally, it should be inviting. It's like yesterday we were talking about the six Goswamis of Vrindavan and the beautiful atmosphere of uh, Vrindavan, Kokila, Hangsa, etc., like that. So it's described that the uh, Sankhya Purvaka, uh, Nama, that the uh, Goswamis of Vrindavan, Sankhya, Sankhya actually means to count. It's interesting, counting. It's like you have Sankhya Yoga, which basically means to enumerate or count the different material elements, you know, earth, water, fire, air, ether, mind, intelligence, false ego, the perceptive senses, the active senses, etc. And so, Sankhya Purvaka Nama. So it's described by the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. They were measuring, they were counting their rounds. <laughs> now, we understand that the coward boys and the gopis, uh, they don't really count too much. You understand? Because they're, anyway, they're in love with Krishna. And you find sometimes in uh, our specific succession, even there are avadutas who don't count their rounds. Uh, great avadutas who don't count their rounds. 
But the six go swamis of Vrindavan, they were always counting their rounds. That means biting. Doesn't mean that they were on the platform of biting. It's different. That means that they were, first of all, concerned with us. Because if they did not count their rounds, uh, we would take that as an example for us that, oh, I'm a little bit more advanced in devotional service and I don't need to count my rounds anymore. Like one devotee one time said, <clears throat> when he was asked, do you chant your rounds? He said, isn't there a place for pure devotional, uh, for spontaneous devotional service in our movement? Well, there is a place, but that's actually in there, not out there. And that did you go on the internet and you have groups of uh, Raganuga Bhaktas who discuss their uh, Siddha Deha, or like when Prabhupada was present, they had this Gopi Baba Club in Los Angeles where they were discussing all sorts of intimate things, even utilizing Prabhupada's books. And of course, Prabhupada got very upset with that, extremely upset with that, and he was uh, saying, yes, all these things are in his books, but you have to know how to apply, just like you have to know how to apply the different medicines in uh, a pharmacy or a drugstore, as they say, or etc. So, in the same way, uh, if one is actually advanced, like the six Goswamis in Vrindavan, they will act in many ways like a neophyte. Not a neophyte in the sense that they'll fight with each other. <laughs> It's one of the symptoms of a neophyte, the fighting neophyte. Uh, but neophyte in the sense that they'll be very strict in counting their rounds. Very, very, very strict in counting their rounds. Very, very strict in the sadhans described about the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. That their sadhana was like uh, the lines on a stone. Lines on a stone you can't really erase. Because uh, they're so... Anyway, they're embedded in the stone. So that's, that's really the point. So as far as our worship of Radha and Krishna, we should just every day, you know, nicely dress them. And of course, the festival days, there's more uh, decoration of the deities, that's true. And we can have nice backdrops that depict the Vrindavan pastimes and everything like that. But don't mess around with the deities. It's very, very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. I think it should be done really strictly. Punctuality, cleanliness, etc. And uh, hmm, especially punctuality, cleanliness, and of course, nice voga being offered to the deities. I was having a discussion, an interesting discussion, that I have with one of my friends, Nishrinya Kovacha, who's the head of the deity worship ministry. And uh, we were having a discussion about putting Govardhan on the altar. He's not enthusiastic about it, I am, anyway. And he said, Govardhan is Raghunuga, and you're supposed to be Vaidhi. And I said, well, mm -hmm. I like Govardhan. Anyway, so we're having this discussion with him back and forth about it. He's a, he's a friend, a good friend. And I tease him sometimes, because in, in uh, Vrindavan, they have Govardhan on the altar, Krishna Balaram altar. And in Vrindavan, they, and in uh, Mayapur, they have Govardhan on the altar, too. So, so anyway, so there's a discussion. But the worship of Govardhan is not Vaidhi worship. Uh, the worship of Shalagram Shila is Vaidhi worship. So there's different aspects or manifestations of the Lord that have to be dealt with differently. Anyway, so that's Gopashtami. And as far as the disappearance day or days of these three great personalities, Dhananjaya Pandit, He's uh, considered to be, well, he's an associate of Lord Chaitanya when Lord Chaitanya was in uh, Navadweep, Mayapur, and he's considered to be equally a follower of Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. Generally, you find the uh, personalities mentioned in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, they're either followers of Lord Chaitanya or followers of Lord Nityananda. Of course, obviously, they follow both, but they're considered branches of one of the two personalities, at least a branch of both personalities, Lord Chaitanya and Lord Nityananda. And the other personalities, let's see, Gadadhar Das. Gadadhar Das is not Gadadhar Pandit Goswami. He's a different personality. And he's considered to be the incarnation of the effulgence 
of Radharani, who was a personality in uh, Krishna Leela named Chandra Kanti. Chandra. Chandra, of course, that means the moon. Kanti means the effulgence of the moon. It's interesting. It's a very interesting poetic description, the effulgence of the moon. So anyway, so Chandra Kanti. And he also was there during Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes in Navadweep Mayapur. And one particular pastime that's memorable is deals with his uh, <clears throat> boldness, his courage in approaching the Kazi. It's an interesting story. The Kazi, of course, was the Muslim magistrate who was in charge of that particular uh, district there. Uh, he was Mughal, not just Muslim, he was Mughal. Uh, and he was quite cruel. This was actually before Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, did his whole pastime with the breaking of the Murdanga, you know, the Kazi's people breaking the Murdanga, and then the Kazi being attacked by Lord Vishnudev at night before that pastime. So one, so Gadana Das was very enthusiastic to get everybody to chant the holy names. So he thought, you know, one night, it was practically a little late at night, the Kazi was resting. He thought, I want to get the Kazi to chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> so boldly, because this is a sign of a pure devotee, Abhaya Shatva Samshudi, Jnana Yogi Vavastatiya, the pure devotee is not afraid. Of course he takes precautions, there's a difference. Like a pure devotee will wear a seatbelt in the car. It's not that he's thinking, you know, why do I need a seatbelt? Krishna will protect me. But he wears a seatbelt, even in India, where you can get away without wearing a seatbelt. Uh, but at the same time, after taking the precautions, he understands that, you know, Krishna's protecting him. So he went uh, in the evening to the cousin's house and says, Where's that cousin? Because he was resting, you know, and the cousin gets out of his bed or room and he says, Get out of us, what are you doing here? <laughs> and get out of said, Chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> and the cousin he said, What? What are you doing? He said, All right, just to placate Ganada Das, he said, Tomorrow I will chant Hare Krishna. And Gadadhar Das, hearing that the Kazi had already chanted Hare Krishna and said, tomorrow I will chant Hare Krishna, he started dancing in ecstasy. He said, oh, you've already done it. Jai, <laughs> And he was successful. In this way, if we can get people to hear the holy names, of course, that's called uh, Agyata Sukriti. That means unknowing devotional service or pious activities. If we can get people to hear the holy names, they're life is successful. It's like we have this one disciple in the UK is always getting people to say uh, Garanga. And so people can say Garanga, Garanga Balite Habi Pulaka Shavir. Or any name of Krishna, then they're liberated. It's an inestimable a benefit from chanting or hearing the holy name. So there is benefit for the Atasukriti. Although, one cannot go back to Godhead with a Gyata Sukriti. One has to, be, has to be a pure devotee of the Lord. But at least it starts one on the path, like giving someone prasadam, etc., like that. So that was Gadadhar Das. And then, of course, Srinivas Acharya, he's the best known personality. So Srinivas was one of the three uh, second generation devotees, primary devotees uh, from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's Srinivasacharya, Naratamadas, Thakur, and Shaimananda Pandit. And Srinivas, there's this whole uh, story about Lord Chaitanya predicted his birth, uh, that when his parents were actually visiting him in uh, Jagannath Puri, Lord Chaitanya said, uh, go back, you're going to have a child who's a great devotee to the Lord, his name is going to be Srinivas. And, uh, Actually, the, uh, oh, his father, his father actually had the nickname Chaitanya Das because, Chait because when he saw Lord Chaitanya taking sannyas, he kept repeating Chaitanya, Chaitanya, Chaitanya. 
Chaitanya, Chaitanya. So, anyway, so and then Srinivas was uh, appeared in this world, and he uh, eventually, of course, there's all these stories about how he, uh, after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu disappeared, he went to uh, Jagannath Puri to study the Srimad Bhagavatam with. Uh, with the devotees there who were still there after Lord Chaitanya disappeared. And then when he went to Jagannath Puri, he discovered that the Bhagavatam that they had was illegible because it had been smeared with the tears of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Very interesting story. And then, so he went to get another uh, copy of the Bhagavatam. By the time he returned, all the devotees in Jagannath Puri had disappeared. So there's this continual story. And of course, uh, Jayapataka Maharaj tells the story in a very emotional way, uh, how wherever Srinivasacharya went, the devotees who he was supposed to associate with uh, disappeared right before he got there. So then he went to uh, Vrindavan shortly after that. He went to Vrindavan, and on the way to Vrindavan, just before he entered, he discovered that uh, Rupa and Sanatana had passed away. And he just, he was thinking, this is horrible. You know, practically speaking, this is horrible. Vrindavan is torturing them. Uh, but then he was uh, placated by the remaining Goswamis of Vrindavan, and he took shelter in a uh, shiksha relationship with uh, Srila Jiva Goswami, and studied the books of the Goswamis with Srila Jiva Goswami, and, and also Narottama Das Thakur, And when he, uh, Finished his studies, he was assigned uh, to go on the Sankirtan party, distribute the knowledge. I mean, he took the books of the Goswamis, or at least copies of the books of the Goswamis, with him uh, back to Bengal. And on the way back to Bengal, there's the famous story he passing through the uh, uh, part of Bengal known as Vana Vishnupur, uh, and there was a king, King Veer Hambir. Virhambir means, you know, basically the heroic king. And this king, he had astrologer, expert astrologer. Even the thieves then had astrologers. And the king was a dacoit. And the astrologer said that this uh, group of devotees that has this cart, this like an ox cart, with a chest in it, is carrying the most uh, valuable gems inside. So he arranged for his soldiers in the middle of the night to capture or take away this chest. And Srinivas Acharya got very, of course, upset when this was taken away. And then Krishna made the arrangement that he came to King Virham Vira's assembly when King Virham Vira was having his Bhagavatam class, because even the thieves had Bhagavatam class at that time. <laughs> and actually, <laughs> it's, it's interesting, even the Dakoids, the Gundas, probably the Gundas, uh, and so he was able to uh, have a discussion with the person giving Bhagavatam class, and then the king understood uh, that this was a great personality because the king had also had a dream of Srinivasacharya coming. And the king uh, showed him this chest of books. And of course, the king previously had opened it up, and he saw the writing of Srila Rupa Goswami, which is described like rows of uh, pearls on a thread. So beautiful. And actually, we've seen mm, copies of the writing of Shiva uh, Rupa Goswami. Just very beautiful writing, you know, precise, very precise writing. And so, anyway, the king surrendered to Srinivasacharya, took initiation from Srinivasacharya, and made uh, a rule that nobody could live in his kingdom if they didn't chant their rounds. So he kicked everybody out of the kingdom. Uh, and he made it a Krishna conscious kingdom. And Srinivasacharya was basically, he uh, became a great Acharya at that time, initiated many great devotees like Ramchandra, Kaviraj, and others. He got married, actually, had two wives. And he had some children, Krishna consciousness. So he was a Grahasta guru. At that point, it's described that one of his daughters, what was her name? Krishna Priya, Gangamata, Ganda, something like that, was actually a guru, too. It's a very interesting story. Anyway, so that's Srinivasacharya.
great personality, important personality in our disciplic succession. So there's the three personalities who disappear. Who is his diction? Uh, Diksha Guru was, it's actually a good question. Uh, Gopal Bhatta Goswami, that's right. Gopal Bhatta Goswami was his Diksha Guru. Gopal Bhatta Goswami. Of course, Gopal Bhatta Goswami was from South India, and he was expert in uh, deity worship. Prophet said that the Radharaman temple, of course, he was the person who worshipped Radharaman, the self-manifested deity of Krishna. Prophet said the devotees could go visit that temple and learn from the devotees how to uh, worship the deities. Uh, so that's Gopal Bhatta Goswami. So now we'll go on to Bhagavatam with that brief delay of 15 minutes, 20 minutes. So I'm sorry we missed that. From now on, I will make an attempt to be more attentive to our calendar. See what's. We need to step back and make sure the service Yeah, good excuse. Well, I mean, usually it's always not listed on the day, so sometimes it's a notation. Oh, yeah, it's a notation, so it's hard. So it's hard to see all the time. Tell you about it. What happened. Anyway, I take responsibility. I'm not making excuses for my inadequacy. So, reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, 13th Chapter, Text 6. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudehi Vai Ha. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudehi Vai Ha. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudehi Vai Ha. Atra. Bhoktavyam Asmabir Devarudam Shudarditaha Vatsaha Samipe Paha Pitwa Chanantu Sanakais Trinam Atra Bhaktam Yamasma Beer Shudar Dittaha Vatsa Samipe Papitva Charantu Sanakais Trinam Atra Bhaktavya Masma Beer Devarudam Shudar Dittaha Vatsa Samipe Papitva Charantu Shanakais Trinam Atra Bhaktavya Masma Diva Rudam Shudar Dittaha Vatsa Sari Pe Papitva Charantu Shanakaistrinam Okay. Atra Bokavyam Asma Ladies, all right atra here on the spot bokavyam our lunch should be eaten asmavihi 
Mayas. Diva Arudam. It is very late now. Shuda. Ardita. We are fatigued with hunger. We are fatigued with hunger. The calves. Samipe. Nearby. Apaha. Water. Vitva. After drinking. Charanto. Let them eat. Shanakahai. Slowly. Trinam. The grasses. Uh, translation I think we should take our lunch here. Since we are already hungry because the time is very late. Here the calves may drink water and go slowly here and there and eat the grass. So, we can repeat, I think we should take our lunch here. I think we should take our lunch here. Since we are already hungry. Since we are already hungry. Because the time is very late. Because the time is very late. Here the calves may drink water. And go slowly here and there and eat the grass. So, of course, this is all yoga maya, that uh, because they don't have material bodies. So, but Krishna makes it, them feel like they're hungry. So, this pastime can take place. <laughs> Krishna's amazing. Even with a spiritual body, you can actually experience hunger. Krishna wants for his pastime's sake. So text seven. Tateti payitvar payitvar va vatsanarabja shadvale mutva shikyani bhuju samam bhagavata muta Accepting Lord Krishna's proposal, the coward boys allowed the calves to drink water from the river and then tied them to trees where there was green, tender grass. Then the boys opened their baskets of food and began eating with Krishna in great transcendental pleasure. So even eating was going on in the spiritual world. <laughs> I mean, these things are all inconceivable how we have a transcendental body full of eternity, bliss, and knowledge, and you're eating, and the food is completely Krishna conscious too, because there's nothing that's mundane there. There's nothing unconscious in the spiritual world. Uh, you know, the dust particles are conscious. The, uh, everything is completely Krishna conscious. <laughs> I mean, how this is going on, we cannot understand. So, Krishnasya Vishvat Pururaji Mandalayar Abhyanana Uladrasho Rajarbakaha Sahoba Vishta Vipane Virejush Chadayatham Puruha Karnikaiyaha like the world of a lotus flower, surrounded by its petals and leaves, Krishna sat in the center encircled by lines of his friends who all looked very beautiful. Every one of them was trying to look forward toward Krishna, thinking that Krishna might look toward him. <laughs> in this way, they all enjoyed their lunch in the forest. So purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri to a pure devotee, Krishna is always visible, as stated in the Brahma Sanghita. And as indicated by Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita, Sarvata Pani Padam Tat Sarvato Kshi Shiro Mukam. If by accumulating pious activities, Krita Punya Punja, one is raised to the platform of pure devotional service. Krishna is always visible in the core of one's heart. One who has attained such perfection is all beautiful and transcendental bliss. The present Krishna conscious movement is an attempt to keep Krishna in the center. For if this is done, all activities will automatically become 
beautiful and blissful. So Om Ganatu Madanvesha Gananjana Shlakaya Chakshuran Medikam Yena Tuzmai Shigurave Maha. So of course, as we know, Krishna is in everyone's heart, as Krishna states in several places in the Gita, Pradesha Arjuna Tishtati, Brahmayan Zabhutani, Yantra Vrani Maya, and then also Mabaksmatir Yanavaponam etc. So uh, we don't see Krishna, and Prabhupada said the amazing thing is that we don't see Krishna. You know, one time Prabhupada was asked, was asked <laughs> do you see Krishna? And of course, Prabhupada answered in a variety of different ways when he was asked that particular question. Because sometimes he's asked in a very challenging way. You know, because if, if you say yes, people say, oh, you're just pretending. If you say no, they'll say you're useless. So Prabhupada said yes, and the, and the amazing thing is you don't see Krishna. That's the amazing thing. Uh, because <clears throat> because basically, uh, for several things, several reasons why we don't see Krishna is we don't understand that Ahamsa Vasha Prabhupada Prabhupada everything comes from Krishna. Everything is, in one sense, uh, different and non different from Krishna. And also because we're covered by the uh, lust, and so we don't see Krishna, Krishna is present. So anyway, the coward boys, they're seeing Krishna at every minute, and in fact it's described elsewhere in the Krishna book that they were thinking that every, every one of them was thinking that Krishna was just looking at them. And that's the amazing thing about Krishna, because Krishna uh, can be present or manifest himself in unlimited places simultaneously. So there's no question of devotees being bereft of the association of Krishna because Krishna is with another devotee. It's like oftentimes I give the example that when Krishna married 16,108 women, it's not that they had to take turns to associate with Krishna. Uh, normally, if someone has several wives, <laughs> they have to take turns, right? But uh, Krishna's wives all had the chance to be with Krishna simultaneously. And when Narada Muni went to Dwarka to visit Krishna in his home, he actually discovered that Krishna was in each and every home doing different things with his uh, family members. A prophet mentions elsewhere that a yogi, he can expand himself up to nine times, but those expansions are like television expansions. There's like that story in the Krishna book of Shobari Muni. Shobari Muni actually married 50 girls. <laughs> he was the waterlogged sage uh, who offended Garuda, and because of that he desired, uh, anyway, he had some desires. So he jumped out of the water, and he asked the king, I think the king was Mandata, he asked the king, please let me marry one of your daughters. The king saw how ugly he looked. And the king said, all right, if I say no, he's going to get angry. And if I say yes, the girls would never accept him. So he said to him, whoever would accept you, you could marry them. And so utilizing his mystic powers, this uh, sage, he turned himself to a beautiful young man, and then all the girls uh, were uh, fighting with each other to get him, and he married all 50 of them. <laughs> Later on, he realized it was a mistake. I mean, that's, a, that's definitely uh, extreme polygamy, 50, or Chichiketu with 10 million. That's even more extreme polygamy. So in any case, uh, still, he, he could not be acting differently with each and every wife. Even though he could expand himself, it was like a television expansion with Krishna, he has a personal relationship with each and every one of us. We all have our own Krishna. It's interesting. Sarva Vidyam Ayam Saranam Vidyam Toham Maranyat Tayena Chanati Naham Tebyo Managupi. As Krishna says about the devotees, which is similar to the statement made here in the purport, because the devotees have a knee in their hearts 
I am also, in, uh, and what is that? No, the devotee, I also have the devotees in my heart. There's an interesting reciprocal relationship, you know, like Yeyatam, Mam, Prabhajate, Tamsatayva, Bajamiyam. And then he says, uh, because they do not know anyone else but me as theirs, I do not know anyone else but them as mine. You understand? That's a beautiful expression. And so, in other words, Krishna has no favorites. Also in the Gita, he says, uh, Sama Hum. Uh, I am equal to everyone. Name shows I don't have any favorites. So you can actually, each and every one of us, can have the position that's mentioned here with the coward boys or with the gopis or with Yashodamai. Uh, of course, we can't become Yashodamai, but the position or the mood of Yashodamai and the coward boys and uh, the gopis and just have Krishna as ours. Another statement is Krishna say tomorrow, Krishna dite par. Krishna belongs to the pure devotee, right? Uh, that's why uh, we simply run after the pure devotee. Krishna say tomorrow, Krishna dite par. Uh, because Krishna belongs to the pure devotee, he's the property of the pure devotee. So we can also have that too if we become Krishna conscious. That's nice, you know? So, on that happy note, we got. Half a minute left for class. Any questions or comments? It's very nice reading about these intimate pastimes of Krishna with the coward boys. I mean, when I read about these pastimes, I actually picture this taking place. You know, Krishna's sitting there, and the coward boys, and they're hungry, and they're eating their food, but they're actually paying attention to Krishna. They're not just like eating food like we eat food and enjoying the tongue. They're actually paying attention to Krishna. They're just eating their food. Oh, I hope he looks at me. I hope he looks at me. I hope he looks at me. Hi, Krishna. Here I am. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so they just it's just immersed in pure love. It's not like picnics that we have in this material world. We're thinking, goody, goody, what did you pack today? Isn't it? Sometimes we have picnics. What did you pack today? Pack any ice cream? We're just, they're just thinking of Krishna. Anyway, on that happy note, all glory is to his divine grace, to the Prabhupada, to the Prabhupada, to the